Jay Williams. I'm running for U.S. Senate. And I want to thank you for having me here and having the opportunity to talk to all of you about, uh, about myself and uh, about my campaign and why I think that uh, you should elect me instead of John Thune to the U.S. Senate. But before I get started, I also want to express my condolences to the family and the friends of the victims of the massacre in, in Orlando. You know, that the census act of violence was motivated at least by hate and, and maybe by some, some ideas of committing a terrorist act. And these, these sort of mass casualty things have become way, way too common in our country. And I hope that we can do something to turn that around. Well, my South Dakota roots run deep. I'm a fourth generation South Dakota. My great grandfather walked out to Gettysburg, South Dakota, which is a little southwest of here, back in the 1880s, and was the first mayor out there. Uh, Joe Barnett, who is who's the Barnett Center here at the NSU campus, is named after him, was my mom's first cousin. So I've got a lot of, a lot of roots here in South Dakota. I was born in 1950 and raised on a farm south of Gettysburg over there. I graduated from high school in 1968. And I was awarded a U.S. Navy scholarship to attend the University of Wisconsin. So I spent the school year uh, studying at Wisconsin, studying political science. And that's where I met my wife, Carol. She's actually a Wisconsin girl. We don't hold that against her. She's <laughs> <laughs> she was studying nutrition there. And from the day we met, we fell in love. We've been together ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the summers, however, uh, I served on active duty with the U.S. Navy. And during my last, last summer, I served as a midshipman aboard the USS Oriskany during wartime operations uh, off the coast of Vietnam from a place called Yankee Station, which is just a piece of water, uh, just a little bit off the coast of North Vietnam. We spent every day from sunup <coughs> till sundown launching jets loaded with bombs and recovering them. And then at night, supply ships would come along board and alongside and give us more fuel and more bombs so we could continue operations the next day. Let me tell you, this was deadly serious business. And it, it gave me an appreciation of what war is and a belief that that kind of awesome, destructive power should only be used as a very last reward, very last resort. Well, after graduating from the University of Wisconsin with a degree in political science, uh, I was commissioned as a naval officer and assigned to U.S. Navy Flight School, where I carrier qualified in a high-performance jet plane and earned my wings. I spent the next two years in Naples, Italy, and two years after that in Virginia Beach, Virginia, serving as a search and rescue helicopter pilot. And after the Navy, Carol and I volunteered for the Peace Corps and were assigned to Bogota, Colombia. Carol, Carol worked as a nutritional cons consultant down there to disadvantage women, and I worked as a transportation consultant to the city of Bogota. And after the Peace Corps, I returned to college at Northern Illinois University, just a, a little west of Chicago, and earned a Master's of Science degree in Computer Science. And that began my, my high-tech work experience career. Uh, I started out working for Texas Instruments down in Dallas, Texas as a software engineer. And then I uh, was, had the opportunity to move to the Silicon Valley in California and work for two different high-tech startup companies. It was really, really an interesting time to be living and working out there. That was like the dawn of the personal computer revolution. You know, in 1981, Time Magazine's Man of the Year was the personal computer. So it was really interesting and exciting work, and I, I, we really enjoyed it. But, you know, some other things were going on then, because in 1980, that's when Ronald Reagan was elected, and that was the beginning of the Reagan Revolution. Now, the Reagan Revolution in California, and up until 1982 in California, students could go to college tuition free. 1982, they ended that kind of part of the Reagan Revolution, and they instituted the nation's first property tax freeze, which had a negative effect on their schools. So along about 1986, when our kids were getting old enough to go to, to, go to school, Carol and I were really concerned about the school system out there. And so we sit, sat down and discussed where would be the best place to raise and educate our kids? And really, it was hands down, the answer was South Dakota. So we sold our house, packed up our family, took our life savings, and moved to Yankton, where with the help of a ready fund loan from the state of South Dakota, we started our high-tech business, and that business is still in operation today. It was really a, really a great move for us. All three of our kids graduated from high, uh, Yankton High School, and they went on to get college degrees. And In fact, they, all three of them have master's degrees. Two of them are working as software engineers, and my daughter's working as a, a middle school principal. So it was a, a, a really good really good deal for us living and, and working here in South Dakota. Of course, I was born and raised here, and coming back after living and working all, all over the world was really one of the best things that ever happened to me. Twelve years ago, 
the Republican Party came into South Dakota and poured millions of dollars into the Senate election and unseated maybe the best senator we ever had, Tom Daschle. Yeah. Unseated him yeah. with, with, with John Thune, of all people. <laughs> For the next four years, John Thune supported all of the failed policies of President George W. Bush. For the next two years, he did everything he could to stop anything that President Obama wanted to do. So after his first six years, Thune came back to South Dakota and ran for election unopposed. So he was re-elected after six years. For the next six years, he spent all of his time trying to stop anything that Barack Obama was trying to do. You know, from, he, I don't know how many times he voted against the Affordable Care Act. And he just is, he just is a complete obstructionist. You know, and my background and life experience really is in a very sharp contrast to John Thune's. You know, I, I served on the USS Arisme, as I mentioned, in wartime operations in Vietnam. John Thune signed a letter to the Ayatollahs in, our, in Iran trying to torpedo negotiations between the United States and Iran. You know, if I had done that as a naval officer, I'd have been court-martialed. <coughs> While I was building and uh, building my business and working on the school board in, in Yankton, John Thune was doing everything he could to obstruct uh, President Obama. To the point in 2013, he participated in the government shutdown over the Affordable Care Act, trying to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. But worse than that, it was right at a time when farmers and ranchers out in western South Dakota were dealing with a blizzard of historic proportions. Shut down the government. He, you know, he, he won't, even, he won't even do his job to consider President Obama's appointment to the Supreme Court. Now, now, after all of that, John Thune endorses the self-professed, greedy real estate mogul, Donald Trump. <laughs> the man who is the racist man who has his racist and woman-hating and uh, lying rhetoric has propelled him to be the Republicans nominee for President of the United States. You know, by endorsing a, endorsing a racist, you know, that, that, you know, some say that that's avoiding the issue by bringing up the fact that John Thune endorses Donald Trump, who is a racist. Well, I think racism is a major issue. And when someone endorses a racist, they become a racist. And I think that is a major issue. But that's not the only issue where John Thune is wrong. Not just his racism or endorsing a racism. Republican policies supported by John Thune and brought, brought on this enormous income inequality that we have in our country right now. The top 1% of our country controls nearly half of our nation's wealth. And 47% of the households in our country, 47% cannot afford a $400 unexpected unexpected expense. We, we need to enact policies to fix that. You know, we need to enact policies that will help the working people of our country. Good jobs, affordable health care, quality, public education. These are common sense policies that America needs. We need policies that include people, not that divide people. But you know, worse than all that, worse than all of that, is the anti-science positions that John Thune and his Republican Party take with regard to our environment. Many of his Republican cohorts, including Donald Trump, say that global warming is a hoax. Now, this is in spite of the fact that it's a near universal agreement among scientists, including Stephen Hawking, who is the world-renowned astrophysicist who calls climate change the world's greatest threat. John Thune's Republican Party resists all efforts to address this clear danger to our very existence. Instead of promoting the kind of electric grid that would allow clean energy like uh, uh, wind and solar to be transferred anywhere in the United States, John Thune supports the XL pipeline. Well, you know, expanding and investing in the fossil fuel infrastructure like the Keystone Pipeline rather than working on ways to eliminate fossil fuel energy, is harmful. And it's the major reason why South Dakota voters should vote for me and for Democrats up and down the ticket.
many, many people in the, in the media, I've read in the media, where people say that I'm, I'm anti-Republican and that will hurt me. Well, the truth is, I am not anti-Republican. You know, I have many friends and family who are Republicans. My father and mother were Republicans. My grandfathers on both sides were Republicans. Uh, Joe Barnett was a Democrat, but uh, the, uh, George Barnett, his first cousin, was a county commissioner, a Republican county commissioner in Sioux Falls for a number of years. So the problem is, is that the Republican Party really has, has lost its way from being a, a decent party in the 50s, which, it, which supported things like uh, immigration and social security and equal pay for equal work regardless of gender. They've, they've discarded all of that. And they've really become the party that is reacting to, it seems to me, President Obama's presidency. You know, the, the black man was elected president, and they started from day one, the, 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 the day before his election, top Republican leaders got together, and they said they were going to do everything they could to stop him from being reelected. Well, luckily, they were unsuccessful in that. Of course, he was reelected. And of course, he's been extremely successful as the president of the United States. But you wouldn't believe that by listening to the Republicans. They say that he has totally failed at everything. And the truth is, the economy is doing great. We have great income inequality, but that's not due to President Obama. That's due to policies of the Republican Party. You know, they, their, their, tax, their tax policies are designed to make it so the super rich don't pay taxes. You know, that's, that's not the kind of policies we need. You know, we Democrats have just completed a really hard-fought hard primary system, seat season, where two candidates, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, campaigned on democratic issues and, you know, had a hard-fought primary season. You know, that debate, the debate that those guys had was really good for the Republican, the Democratic Party. I mean, we, we, we debated things like you know, tuition-free school and uh, Medicare for all, those kinds of things. That's been really good, good for us. And, you know, even though Senator Sanders didn't win, didn't win the primary and isn't going to be our nominee, he is going to be a very powerful senator because you know, especially if we take the Senate back, which I very much hope we will, Senator Sanders will be a, a good and powerful force for democratic and progressive ideals in, in, in our country. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Clinton also waged an impressive primary campaign. In spite of years of right-wing hate-mongering heaped upon her, she remained, she kept her dignity and her commitment to the right to, to the American people. You know, she worked hard. And she's earned the right to be the historic first woman president of the United States. Mm -hmm. It is now incumbent on all of us to work hard to elect Democrats up and down the ballot. You know, if you can help financially, great. Contribute to my campaign. Carol's my treasurer. She'd be happy to take your check. <laughs> and contribute to other Democratic candidates, like Corey back there, who's all also you know, <laughs> running, running for election. If you can do that, that's great. But we must hand the Republican Party a sound defeat in this election, starting with our state legislative candidates, moving up to Paula Hawks for the U.S. House of Representatives, me, Jay Williams for the U.S. Senate, and, of course, Hillary Clinton as President of the United States. And I look forward to all of your support, and I really appreciate you having me today, and I, I thank you, and I'd be happy to take a few questions if you have some.